Hello students, how are you doing? I hope you're having a happy Monday. Today is a little bit of an awkward video lesson because I actually have four students in here right now uh, retaking a quiz because they're awesome students, thank you. Um, but I, I just feel a little awkward because I have a studio audience today. I'm not in here all by myself. Um, anyway, I, this is not a formal lesson and if you do not need a formal lesson today, there's no need to watch this video. Um, we started the review in class today and I had students ask me about question 8b off of the review, question 13 off of the review, and questions 23 and 24. And I'm just going to take uh, however much time is needed to work my way through these four problems and uh, so that you guys have, have some, some good math there to, work, uh, to, to look at, to help prepare you for your test on Wednesday, that is. Um, let's first take a look at question 8b. I can... Uh, bring that underneath the screen here. It says uh, 8b. Find, oh great question here. Find the value of x for which the slope of the line through x3 and 5, 7 is 5 over 4. So keyword here, slope. And if they're asking for slope and they give you two points, you're going to want to put those two points into the slope formula. So um, I know that the slope, let's, I'm just going to use the letter m right now, is equal to, I guess if I use the whole formula, y2 minus y, uh, y1 over x2 minus x1. And, and then you just start plugging values in. They tell us that the slope is equal to 5 over 4, so I change the m to 5 over 4. Uh, y2, 7 minus y1, which is 3. Um, divided by uh, x2, which is 5, minus my x variable. All right, a couple different ways of solving this. Whenever I have a fraction equals a fraction, though, what mathematically my brain immediately wants to do is just do some cross-multiplying. Um, I would first change the 7 minus 3 to a 4. 5 minus x, there's nothing you can do with that, but now we can do some cross-multiplying. This is a task that you can do whenever you have a fraction equals a fraction. On one side, I have 5 times 5 minus x. On the other side, I have 4 times 4, which is 16. Distribute the 5 here. 25 minus 5x equals 16. Subtract this 25 from both sides. So negative 5x equals 16 minus 25, which is, of course, negative 9. And then finally, divide both sides by this uh, negative 5. And we end up with x equals 9 and 5 do not divide evenly. But a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I have x equals 9 fifths. Um, if you're unsure if your answer is right, you can always plug your value of x into your original equation and see if you get a... Uh, a true statement coming out. So we're going to see is 5 over 4 equal to 4 over 5 minus 9 fifths? Well, let's find out. Let's see. 5 I'd need to change to 25 over 5. On this side, I have 4 over 25 fifths minus 9 fifths. Well, that's equal to 16 fifths equals 5 over 4. Um, and then let's see, I'm going to continue working on this right side. If, if uh, this 4 were a fraction, it would be 4 over 1. And if I change the division to multiplication, I would need to uh, reciprocate the denominator, so it would become 5 over um, 16. And then when you multiply, and we're still curious, is that equal to 5 over 4? Multiply, I get 20 over 16. Is that equal to 5 over 4? 20 and 16 are both divisible by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Oh, so I'm verifying that they are right. So check. So it worked to check. The answer must be 9 fifths. All right, that was problem 8b. I'm going to hold it there for three seconds, two, one. And the second question um, I was asked was about number 13. And I think the reason I got asked about number 13, it's just a, a normal system of equations 
But I imagine I got asked this question because of the decimals that are involved with this problem. So let's say I had 0.5x plus 1.5y equals 5, and the second equation is x plus y equals negative 10. Well, um, if, if you are uncomfortable dealing with decimals, the best thing to do is, is to quickly eliminate those decimals as quickly as you can. Um, I noticed that each of these decimals goes uh, a tenth deep, and because they both go a tenth deep, that means that if we multiply both sides by 10, tenth, 10, get it? Tenth, 10. If it was hundredth, it would have been 100. All right. And if I multiply by 10, uh, 10 times 0 0.5 is 5x, 10 times 1.5 is 15y, and 5 times 10 is 50. And now this equation uh, doesn't have any, any decimals at all. Um, another technique, let's say that you didn't want to multiply it by a number as big as 10. I'm going to cross this out and get rid of that. Cross this out. Um, think, well, what could you multiply 0.5 by and another 1.5 by to get rid of the decimal in one shot? And I know that if I multiply a 0.5 by 2, 2 times 0.5 is 1. So that would also eliminate the decimal. Uh, so 2 times 0.5 is just x, plus 2 times 1.5 is uh, 3y, and 2 times 5 is 10. And if you look at these equations, it's definitely a little bit nicer looking than using this 5x plus 15y. Now, um, this looks to me to be tailor bred for, uh, for elim elimination. I like to use addition when I do my elimination, so I'd multiply the second equation by negative 1, which would make it negative x minus y equals positive 10. And now when I add the two equations together, on the left side I get a 2y, on the right side I get a 20. And divide both sides by 2, y equals 10. And uh, take this y equals 10. You can plug it into any one of these equations. Um, this nice, well, this x plus y equals negative 10 looks very easy to use. So x plus y equals negative 10. Change the y to a 10. So x plus 10 equals negative 10. And when you subtract 10 from both sides, you get negative 20 as your answer. And don't forget, um, this is the answer to where these two equations intersect. So you need to write your answers accordingly, please. And that is number 13. Yay. Next, uh, we have a couple story problems that people would like to, uh, to learn about. So I'm going to try out numbers 23 and 24. Let's get a fresh piece of paper. Number 23. And let's, uh, let's read 23. All right. The admission fee to a small fair is $1.50 for children and $4 for adults. On a certain day, 2,200 people entered the fair, and a total of $5,050 was collected. How many children and how many adults went to the fair? Sounds to me like the people at the fair did not collect tickets. If they would have collected tickets, they could have just counted the number of tickets, obviously. But maybe they lost those tickets, so now we need some algebra. How many children? So I'm going to have x be the number of children. And uh, then my second variable, I will pick W. Um, that's a horrible looking W. Start over, Elliot. W. Uh, w is the number of adults. And I know that 2,200 people entered the fair. So if I add the number of children plus the number of adults, that should give me the total number of people at the fair altogether which would be 2,200. Um, now, it's a total of $5,050. Well, I know that if I multiply $1.50, or just 1 1.5, times the number of children, plus $4 times the number of adult tickets, this will tell me how much money I collected on children tickets. 
This will tell me how much money I collected on adult tickets, and your children tickets plus your adult tickets is supposed to add up to $5,050. And that's the setup. And uh, you don't want to use an elimination technique. Well, you could go with elimination or substitution to solve this one. Um, let me think. Hmm. I'm not sure it really matters, but because of this decimal here, um, I'm tempted to use elimination right now. Because like I said before, I know that if I multiply this entire equation by 2, 1.5 times 2, I'll, I'll successfully get rid of all the decimals. So that will become a 3x plus 8w equals 2 times 5,050, which is 10,100. And the second equation, well, if I want to cancel out the x, I would want to multiply this equation by, uh, by 3, or negative 3. If I wanted to get rid of the w, I'd want to multiply this first equation by negative 8. Um, I want to choose the x so that I'm multiplying by a smaller number. Um, so if I multiply by negative 3, it'll become a negative 3x, so that, uh, the, that x will get eliminated, minus 3w equals negative 6,600. And I add the two equations. The x's beautifully cancel away. And I'm left with a 5w. And on the other side, I'm going to actually use my, my calculator here. Um, let's see. 10,100 minus 6,000. 600, 3,500, should have done that in my head, but I didn't. Um, and then uh, when I divide both sides by 5, um, you don't need to know 3,500 divided by 5, you just need to know 35 divided by 5, well, that's 7, and because I covered up the two zeros, it's going to have to be 700. So I know that I had 700 adults. And then finally, if I go... Uh, x plus 700, I know I must get an answer of 2200, and when you subtract that 700 from both sides, um, you'll end up with an answer of 1500. And finally, don't forget to make sure you answer the question at the end. There were 1500 children and 700 adults. Oh, re respell adults. Adults. Um, adults, probably use a complete sentence at the fair. All right, and that, everybody, that is number 23 in all its wonderful beauty. Um, and I have one more example for you that students asked about, and that was number 24. So let's take a look at that one. Ooh, landscaping. That kind of reminds me of that bee store I told you in class today. Bee store, that's right. Um, okay. A landscaping company placed two orders with a nursery. The first order was 13 bushes and four trees, total of $487. The second order was six bushes and two trees for a total of 232. Okay, so this is a lot like the, the, the two situation problem that I was solving in, a, in previous lessons. So um, X is going to be, I'm looking for the, uh, the cost of a bush and a tree. So X is gonna be the cost of a bush And um, I'm going to pick M as my second variable, and that is going to be cost of a tree. Notice I'm not just writing the word bush, and I'm not just writing the word tree. I'm talking about the cost of a bush, cost of a tree. You Use an actual sentence to declare that variable. Make it very explicit. Okay, now, in situation one, 13 bushes, so 13x, and 4 trees, so 4m, was a total of $487. The second situation was six bushes, so 6x, and two trees, 
So 2m, that would be a total of 232. Um, so situation one, situation two, I'll take that. Thank you. And that's our setup. If you have any questions, you should definitely ask me in class tomorrow. Um, in this one, I looked, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be using some elimination here. And uh, I'm noticing with these m's that if I multiply the second equation by negative 2, that will give me negative 12x minus 4m. Now I'm going to get that nice elimination. And negative 2 times 232 is negative 464. And if you add the two equations together, it looks like something here, something really nice is going to happen. Uh, 13x minus 12x, that's just x. Uh, the m's have canceled out to be a 0. And 487 minus 464 is 23. Thank you. Um, so we know that x is equal to 23. And if I take this 23 and plug it into any equation, um, I guess I'll plug into this first one. I have 13 times 23 plus 4m equals 487. Oh, poor Elliot doesn't know what 13 times 23 is. It's 299. I used a calculator. 299 plus 4m equals 487. Um, and if I subtracted 299 from both sides, pretend like you're subtracting 300. So if I subtracted 300, that would be 187, which would mean it would be 188, because it would have to be one more than that. Is that right? Yes. OK. Uh, divide both sides by 4, and 188 divided by 4 is 47. So m equals 47. Make sure you answer the question at the end. Um, oh, we're talking cost. So a bush costs $23, and a tree costs $47. And that is number 24. All right, students, I hope that if you had questions on any one of these four problems, that, uh, that my explanation of it. Uh, I hope that you found it useful, and if not, just make sure you ask about it in class tomorrow. Maybe I can help you out then, um, and uh, I, I wish you the best of luck as you prepare for your first test this year. I, like I said uh, in class today, make sure that you, uh, that I really feel the best way to study for my particular class would be to make, uh, would be to redo all the quizzes, make sure you know how to do all those problems on the quizzes. If you can do every single problem on the quiz, I do believe you'll be able to do every single problem on the test. With that said, I hope you have yourself a wonderful Monday, and I will see you tomorrow. And uh, seeing as tomorrow's our last day before the test, bring in a question, and make sure you ask that question. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.